I think the Hizmet movement represents Islam very effectively in dialogue with the modern world, with modern forms of education on all their levels, and in promoting interreligious respect and tolerance. internal debate. I am Leo Lefebvre. I teach theology at Georgetown University where I hold the Matteo Ricci Chair of Theology, which was established to support a new doctoral program in religious pluralism. So my academic field is Christian theology in dialogue with other religious traditions. And I've been involved in dialogue with a number of different religions, including Muslims, for many years now. Um, I used to be a member of both the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic dialogues of Muslims and Catholics. I was teaching in New York City when the terrible attacks of 9-1-1 took place, and so I began giving talks about Islam uh, to people to explain the broader context of Islam and how much this violated Islamic principles. I've also been involved with the Istanbul Foundation for Science and Culture, which promotes awareness of Bediouism and Said Nursi. So I've been to Istanbul several times to give talks on uh, Bediouism in, in relation to various Christian figures. When I moved to Georgetown University in 2005, I discovered that there was an ongoing Muslim-Christian dialogue in which many of the Muslim participants were from the Rumi Forum, which is uh, an organization of Hizmet that follows the ideals taught by Fethullah Gulen. Then through them, I've gotten to know people from Hizmet all over the world. Uh, so I went to Turkey with uh, the Rumi Forum, and then when I went to India a few years later, I met people from Hizmet both in Calcutta and in Delhi, and I gave a talk at the Hizmet Foundation called the Indialogue Foundation in New Delhi. Then a couple years later, I uh, was hosted by the Hizmet community in Melbourne, Australia, where they're known as the Australian Intercultural Society during the time of the Parliament of the World's Religions. And so I've had very good relations with followers of Mr. Gulen on a number of different continents and respect their work very much. I've visited a number of their schools and have been very impressed by how they try to bring a high quality education to students who often otherwise would not be able to afford such an education. And I know how transformative this can be. I lectured some years ago at Fatih University, uh, which is again affiliated with the Hizmet movement in the suburbs of Istanbul, and was very impressed by the faculty there. Regarding Fethullah Gulen, I have not had the privilege to meet him or hear him speak personally. We've invited him to Georgetown, but he was not able to accept the offer. Uh, but I've read a number of his works and met a number of people inspired by his teachings, and I respect him very much. I was impressed by the convergence between the teachings of Mr. Gulen and Pope Francis. And so last February, when I was in India, I gave a talk at the Jesuit Graduate School of Theology, Vijajati, in Delhi, on this convergence between Pope Francis and Fetchula Gulen. Both of them have a strong sense of the joy of living in relationship to God. Both of them acknowledge materialism and the, uh, the dominance of greed as some of the greatest dangers to life on our planet today. And both live a very simple life and teach their followers to use the goods of this world to serve spiritual values and to reach out to those who are poor. And both of them are great proponents of interreligious understanding and tolerance and dialogue. 
And again, I was struck by the convergence of the principles of respecting other traditions that both of these teachers present. Regarding the contribution of Mr. Gulen and the Hizmet movement to the common good, I think above all they've been successful in networking many different people, creating relationships, fostering relationships. I've attended dinners where at one of them I sat next to a, a man from South Korea who was a Buddhist minister. Uh, I witnessed the whirling dervishes dancing in an office of the U.S. Congress and also in a synagogue. And so the Rumi Forum in Washington, D.C., as well as followers of Mr. Gulen around the world, often are conveners, uh, inviting people to come into a safe space for interreligious reflection. When I was in Kolkata, I introduced a young Turkish man from the Hizmet movement to one of the leaders of the Ramakrishna Mission, which is a major international Hindu movement. And the young man invited the senior Hindu leader to come to an interreligious event that he was planning in India. So I think that's a tremendous contribution. As I mentioned before, I think education is invaluable. Um, I also think the style of interpreting traditional Islamic principles and especially Sufi principles that Mr. Gulen and his followers propose is very moving. Again, I've noted a strong convergence with values from the Christian tradition on many points. I think the Hizmet movement represents Islam very effectively in dialogue with the modern world, with modern forms of education on all their levels and in promoting interreligious respect and tolerance. So I esteem the teachings of Mr. Gulen and the Hizmet movement very much. Every one of the major religious traditions today is going through a major internal debate over its own identity and also its relationships with other religious communities. And so I think the challenges that Hizmet faces are not unique to Islam, but with certain variations challenge every religious tradition today. Every religious tradition uh, can have persons who are more exclusivist, who think that God is known only in their form and that God does not have positive relations with people of other traditions or even non-theistic traditions can have their own type of exclusivist perspectives. A variety of different religions, including Islam and Christianity, also have more uh, open perspectives affirming that God or ultimate reality embraces all humans, indeed all of the universe. And these traditions recognize that persons who follow another religious path can also be in a genuine relationship to God. And Fetchel Gulen quotes traditional Islamic teachings on acknowledging prophets from other religious traditions and teaches very clearly that he, as a Muslim, has to acknowledge these truths in other religions. I've been able to visit uh, schools related to the Hizmet movement in Australia, in India, and Turkey, and have been very impressed by their commitment to high-quality standards for students. Education is one of the most important contributions that we can make to the next generation on every level in terms of physical education, emotional education, knowledge of the world and the physical and social sciences, exploring the humanities, and particularly in religion, the way we educate young people about religion can have a tremendous impact on the future. There's a Swiss Catholic theologian, Hans Kuhn, who has made a very famous challenge to the world. No world peace without interreligious understanding, and no interreligious understanding without interreligious dialogue. And so the commitment of the schools of the Hizmet movement to interreligious understanding is really vital. Some years ago, I was invited by the Dean of Philosophy of Fatih University to deliver a lecture on how universities can contribute to dialogue among the civilizations. And so I made some general comments, and they made some more specific comments about what we do at Georgetown. 
and the response of the dean was very, very positive there. So they, again, like the Muslims I met at Jamia Mili Islamia University, saw university education as playing a vital role in shaping a common discourse among religious communities. I am aware that various accusations have been made about Mr. Gulen and the Hizmet movement. I'm not a political commentator on Turkish internal affairs, so I'm not really in a position to pass judgment on the internal issues of Turkish politics today. From the writings I have seen of Mr. Gulen, I respect very highly his interpretation of Islam and his commitment to humanitarian ideals, to just governance, to honest accountability. And so I take him at his word when he supports democracy. The thing that distinguishes the Ismet movement is that people are donating money, but they're going themselves also and doing it uh, and devoting their lives to doing it. The Guyan movement has uh, come a long way, uh, and um, people see the overall causes for causes, the, the things for which the Gulen movement stands. But I think it is also a reality that um, Gulen provided a sense of inspiration along with a, a vision.